Hi everyone, thanks for coming back for part two. I just wanted to show you this article over here. It's actually the first one that came up, but I've read other articles about this, about the true count to Pentecost, and why it's actually not just a 50-day count. It's actually a count of two different cycles, which add up to 99 days and I'm not sure how it's explained in this article exactly I haven't read the entire article but this is just one of them there's many articles on the internet about this but I'll just read the first paragraph it says the true count to Pentecost rediscovered this amazing discovery takes the guesswork out of how to count to Pentecost by conclusively proving from scripture that the numbering of the 50 days begins on the morrow after the seventh Sabbath complete. Leviticus 23.16 Instead of numbering from the wave sheaf, by doing this it places Pentecost at the end of the fourth month instead of the beginning of the third month. And then it mentions all these facts about how the the fourth month is the one that matches up with the scriptures and also matches up with the time of the harvest more than the beginning of the third month. So this, I'll just put a link to this article, but there's other articles on the internet if that's something you want to look into. That's something that I looked into years ago and that's why I've known about that. Like I said, that's just the first article that came up. There's some other ones here, and that's something that you can research to get a true count for Pentecost. And then the other thing that I thought was really amazing is the fact that Humble Horse had mentioned that he wanted to buy a scythe and a Green Reaper costume, which was really interesting because that's something I had wanted to talk about in a couple of my videos. I had even put the tabs up, but I just never got around to it because I wanted to point out something about Pentecost and the fact that the first sheaf of the wave offering, when you present the first fruits, the, the first handful, the first sheaf, you, you need to use a sickle in order to to cut that sheaf. And, and I'll show you the definition for sickle right here. It says an implement for cutting grain, grass, etc. consisting of a curved hook-like blade mounted in a short handle. So a sickle is used to cut the, the first sheaf of grain to offer it as first fruits. So what you need to keep in mind is that Jesus was the first fruits of the dead. Okay, it's right here in 1 Corinthians 15 20. It says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So Jesus is the first fruits of the dead, but the, there's another type of first fruits that's presented on Pentecost. So we'll go back to Leviticus 23, and it says here, Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. So this is a, a wave offering of two loaves of bread that are baked with fine flour and with leaven. And it, it doesn't say anything about a, a sheaf or an offering of wheat. It's just the bread that is made with the leaven using using the wheat and and possibly even using the same wheat that was presented back on first fruits 
but this wheat is not a, a sheaf that, that's cut and presented. So that's the point that I want to make is that there is no sickle involved in, in this offering. And as you know from the Grim Reaper costumes, you know that the scythe, which is basically a sickle with just a larger handle, it has the same function, has the same meaning, it, it actually represents death. So the, the sickle represents death because it's cutting the wheat from the root, from its life source, and it's just a way of representing death, and that first sheaf offering would have to be cut with a sickle and then presented but then on Pentecost you just have the the bread that's baked with the the wheat you don't have a, an offering presented at that time but then when you go to Revelation 14 you see the mention of a sickle again and I just wanted to bring this up because Someone had asked uh, how many raptures there are in the in the Bible codes, which I'm not really sure I had to check for that in the Bible codes, but just based on the scriptures, I'm really not seeing more than one rapture. I guess there could be a possibility that there may be another harvest in between the two harvests that are mentioned in Revelation 14. But I just wanted to point this out. I'm just going to read Revelation 14 and it says, And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Sion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sang, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. They are These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins, these are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of he heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them, that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of the waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever, and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. So what I'm seeing, unless there's a rapture in between the 144,000 on Mount Zion and the initiation of the mark of the beast and all those who die henceforth 
from that point on unless there's another rapture in there I'm really not seeing for sure a, another rapture other than just one rapture in the scriptures so I know that there's people that talk about multiple raptures and I'm not sure if that's going to be the case or not and that's what I wanted to present and that's why I wanted to talk about the scythe because then when you get to Revelation 4 14 14 it says and I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man having in his having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle and like I said a sickle is very similar to a scythe and as we know from images of a scythe and the grim reaper the sickle represents death and I think that's what's being represented at this point on a lot of people think that this is talking about another harvest or another rapture but I think based on the description it seems to be talking more of a harvest of souls not another rapture but I'll go ahead and, and read the rest of this and, and I'll point out what it says and why I think that it says and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time is come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe and I just want to show you what what it's saying here in the Greek where it says ripe this word right here it actually means dry and withered so this is beyond the point of being ripe this is at the point when the the harvest has now become dry and is withered and the sickle is being thrust in to reap the earth this this does not sound to me like a, a rapture and then it immediately goes on to say after that and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped and another and another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven he also having a sharp sickle and another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe and I think that's interesting that it's the angel who has power over fire that is saying this and we talked about the fire when we did the Bible codes on the two wave loaves and how the two wave loaves are not to be burnt because they're made with leaven and leaven is not supposed to be burnt and then we see that there's another angel coming out from the altar that has power over fire and he cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe and this word for ripe over here concerning the grapes it means to flourish to come to maturity this is like the, the point where the grapes are fully ripe they're as ripe and as juicy as they can possibly be before they they, they start to rot this is just like the, the prime time for for making wine which of course you know talks about the wine press just after that and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God and the wine press was trodden without the city and blood came out of the wine press even unto the horses bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs and I'm about out of time so I'm gonna to have to continue in the next video thanks